We call that the S292. It's intermatable with the standard SMAs, but it has an air dielectric interface. The 2.92 millimeter is the 40 gigahertz diameter in the marketplace. Now, our customers who are mostly in the military, avionics, satellite uh, type of communications, they need that 40 gigahertz capability. They need it robust. It needs to be able to handle rough environments. So they were asking us to come forward and help them to meet those goals. In the designing the connector, we wanted to get a good transition from the glass bead into the connector. And that all occurs here at this intersection here where the socket contact matches up to the glass bead. And that's where we get into things that we call launch diameters. Using the Thunderline glass bead as the model, we noticed that their launch diameter was a 1.75 millimeter diameter. So what we did is we went to match our structure to meet their glass bead. And by doing that, we got a flat response going from the glass bead into our connector. The next thing we looked at was the dielectric material. How were we going to make this robust and keep everything under control? We're talking tenths of thousands of an inch here, and everything has to be rock solid. So we looked at Altum, we looked at Teflon. Teflon's a great RF material, but it's a little spongy. It doesn't really hold dimensions that well. Finally settled on Delrin. Delrin is a rock hard material. It's almost like a marble. Uh, you get something captivated inside the Delrin and it's just not going to move. We wanted to have a low TDR response. We wanted a flat TDR response. And we were able to do that in a one piece construction. As we were designing this connector, of course, we were coming up with tolerances a little bit tighter than we're used to. Uh, we traditionally machine center contacts to plus or minus five tenths in diameter. And when we came up with this S292, I was trying to hold tolerances of plus or minus five tenths. As we went through the design, we noticed that we had to tighten that up a little bit. We also had to get into some really tight structures as far as maintaining interface dimensions um, when you have four components that yield a tolerance stack up. I thought John was going to kill me when I gave him some of the link tolerances that we were going to go with, but he's got a pretty good group of guys down there. The key element in order to develop these connectors for our customers is that they had to have a flat response to 40 gigahertz. So simplification was the key. Simplification both for the performance and simplification to keep the cost under control. What we have here is we have different configurations of the jack flange mount field replaceable connectors and the plugs. And the way we test these devices is to actually use the Thunderline glass bead mounted in a flange. And then by sandwiching these together, we're looking at the SWR response of two connectors and the glass bead. So we get to see all the discontinuities through the device. By mounting these together, we can come into the network analyzer and we can look at the three basic parameters of performance. We have the insertion loss curve, which is a flat response all the way up to 40 gigahertz. That's a great technique in order to see if there's any moting going on in the device. And then in the blue, we have the time domain response. The idea there is that I'm looking at the reflection coefficient versus time. So I can see through the device how flat the response is from the interface, through the dielectric, into the transition of the glass bead. And then in yellow, we have the total result of everything, which is the VSWR. And you can see that we have a very low response from DC to 18 gigahertz. And then from 18 to 30 gigahertz, we see the 1.3 VSWR. And then we continue with a flat response out to 40 gigahertz. One of the nice things we run into in the marketplace with the S292 is that it's intermatable over such a wide range of products. The standard SMA connector, the uh, K connector from Enritsu, the uh, 3.5 millimeter, uh, which was uh, highly developed by Hewlett Packard. These are all intermatable connectors with different frequency ranges. Every customer has a different profile on the outside of their device. And so you need a different flange structure in order to match up. 
So we have a product line of both the plugs and the jacks for the field replaceable connector with the different flange structures that our customers require. When we're designing to the upper frequencies, it's really fun to take a look at the RF structures and how they interplay with each other. Trying to get a signal from a glass bead into an air dielectric, into a piece of Delrin, back into a piece of air, there's a lot going on there. It looks simple sitting on the table, but when two-tenths of an inch is going to make all the difference in the world, you really have to pull it together.